Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and uh, I've got kind of a late night unboxing. I'm actually going to be filming a few videos right now, so get used to this shirt and hat combo. Um, so this is an exciting one. This is a knife that, uh, if you've looked at the thumbnail already, you know this is a Grimsmo Norseman. And the Grimsmo, Grimsmo Norseman is a thing in the EDC world, in the knife collecting world. Um, when I kind of came on to the knife scene, I think was kind of around the peak of Grimsmo Norseman hype, where the model was just remarkably popular and secondary prices were bananas and it was really, really difficult to get a spot for one. Since that time, I've been offered numerous times people who had a book spot and then decided when it came up that they actually didn't want it and they were willing to give it to me and I've passed on that. Um, I've also seen them on the secondary for less than they cost new quite a bit at this point. And uh, it, it seems that that wave has kind of passed. I know now Grimsmo seems to be making the Rask 2.0 or the second gen Rask or whatever. They're making the Rask again. And uh, that one I think actually looks more my style, but there's no way you're... Uh, I say no way. I don't see myself <laughs> uh, paying what Rask's cost to get a Rask right now. But anyways, I've never actually had like a, a proper experience with a Norseman. Um, I've handled them once or twice, just if they've been in a buddy's pocket and that's it. And so I've probably flicked one a handful of times and, and that's really it, but I've never carried one. I've never cut with one. None of that. Um, so my buddy Sean, Geared Toward Gear, who has been on my podcast before and uh, has a great YouTube channel, which I wish he'd post to more because I really, really enjoy his videos. Um, he loaned me this and uh, I'll link to Geared Toward Gear down below because this is his knife and he's letting me borrow it, which is super generous of him. Um, I think he's also having another one built. He got a book spot, so he's got another one that's being built for him right now, which is cool. But uh, it, I'll also link down below uh, to Shadowborn Hanks because the person who had this before me was JD from Shadowborn Hanks. And uh, I actually don't know JD personally, but uh, he seems to have a lot of mutual friends with me and I hear him spoken highly of all the time. Um, and I've never had one of his Hanks until now, but Sean, Gear Toward Gear, was telling me that um, JD was going to toss in a couple of Hanks for me in here, which was super generous of him and uncalled for. I didn't, uh, I didn't ask him for it. He just told me they were in here. So um, I'll link to Shadowborn Hanks down below as well. And let's check it out. I'm wearing my Koenig shirt today, so I figured I'll unbox with my brand new Koenig Mini Goblin. Well, new to me. This is a used knife, but um, yeah. So let's take a look in here and see what we've got. Oh snap, there's a few Hanks in here. Wow, look at all this. All right, so this one has a note in it. This one doesn't. Let me start with the one that has the note. Hey Jake, I threw a couple of Hanks. I threw in a couple of Hanks with Sean's knife. You can do whatever you want with them. Keep them, give them away. Whatevs. I totally do not expect anything for it. I'm just spreading the good word about Hanks. Keep up the awesome work with your channel. Thanks, JD. Super, super nice of him. Um, I imagine I'll probably want to keep at least one of these for myself. <laughs> I use Hanks a decent bit now. Um, I keep them in my fanny pack. I keep some in the drawer next to my, or at my desk. I, I have them kind of all over the place and they come in real handy. So let's check these out. I've never seen some of his. I'll probably end up including some of them in a giveaway because it's super generous of them to do this. This is rad. So this one's like a Paisley. That's pretty cool. I like his stitch work. This side is kind of like canvassy. This feels like a kind of a robust hank the way that it's, I don't know, like nothing on it is overly soft. It feels kind of sturdy, which is nice. I feel like a lot of hanks are microfiber and so they're very good for a lot of things that I do with them, frankly, but to have a hank that's like sturdier doesn't sound like a bad idea either for some variety. Let's see what this one is. All right, in here, also some of his stickers. Bam. 
Shadowborn Hanks. And let's see, this guy. Looks like this one is backed with the same material. Oh, this one, this is bigger too, right? Am I crazy? What is this? All natural lifetime honey. Unfiltered local organic. That's kind of rad. It's like a kind of vintage looking like honey logo. Um, and then on the back, we've got this nice kind of tan color again. This one feels a little thinner. I think the paisley material was thick on that one. This is nice. I like both of these. These are cool. All right. So a couple of Hanks. Thank you, JD. I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, we'll figure out what exactly I'm going to do with them, but I'll keep at least one. Maybe I'll be selfish and keep both. <laughs> we'll see. Um, all right. So that's just paper. Get, get this box out of here. Bunch of paper down in there, and then bubble wrap around a box, which is in the envelope thing. There we go. Alright, first things first, I'll hand it to Grimsmo. This is a great, great case. Um, I dig it when nice knives come in like a hard shell, padded inside, I'm assuming, kind of pelican style case. That's a good move. Um, when knives are this expensive, I feel like it should have a really nice case. All right, let's bust into here. See what we're looking at. Oh yeah, it's a whole thing. All right, so this is the way that they ship. Let me make sure I've got a hand here so it doesn't fall out. Um, it's some nano oil in here. Yeah, nano oil. And then a little T9 Torx tool. And then the knife itself. This is a nice case. I dig it. This one has the, I think it's called the star pattern. I think that's what they call it. Nice. All right. I set this case down. We'll take a look at the knife. So yeah, I think if I were to build one of these or select one like for myself, I'd probably go with this pattern. I really like the way this looks. And this one's all just nude, right? It's all plain hardware. Um, nothing is anodized, any funky colors or coated or anything like that. This one is a single-sided thumb stud. To me, it would be really important if I was getting one of these to have the, the double-sided thumb studs. I just like to middle finger flick knives. And so the idea of putting a thumb stud just on one side I don't know. Tell me down below in the comments if you think there's a justifiable reason for doing that. Because I can't really think of one uh, unless maybe you prefer the aesthetics of the lock side to have just a screw there instead of a stud. Maybe pulling out of pocket if you're prone to having it snag or something. I don't have that problem on thumb stud knives. I don't know. I'd rather have a thumb stud on both sides. It seems like missing the mark to just put it on one side. Maybe it's just a lot easier. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, yeah, this feels really cool. The machining is very, very nice. Grimsmo is obviously kinda known for that. Um, all right, I'm gonna do thumb stud first and see how it feels action-wise with the thumb stud. That's yeah, pretty good. Ooh, these ergos are better than I remember them feeling. Maybe it's because of this Star pattern? I don't know. That that shouldn't really affect the ergos all that much, but that feels good to me. I like the way that these grooves fit into my hand. Um, there are a lot of jokes about this blade shape. Primarily, the one that I've heard the most has been about the, the fact that it looks kind of like a male horse's genitalia. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, I doubt this is the first time you've heard that joke in reference to this knife. And I mean, yeah, I can, I can see it. Um, all right, let's see how it closes. <laughs> It'll drop. It even seems to like bounce back a little bit. Wow. Yeah, it's a guillotine. Free dropping for sure. It's a cool spec, this like kind of all plain version. Um, I kind of dig how sterile the whole thing looks. I believe at Grimsmo they even machine all of their own hardware from what I've heard. I like that the pivot 
on this side is captive and it's just their logo and so you just access it from the one side only they obviously uh, if you look closely at the blade you can see that they CNC these bevels and you get the lines from their machining which I think looks pretty cool I've heard some people kind of hate on that because it looks maybe unfinished or something I, I dig it um, I think it looks cool to see the way that they do that uh, this one is in CPM 154 the way I understand it from what I've heard uh, so they typically do these in RWL 34 that's the way I've seen them most of the time I think it's a COVID thing they started having trouble getting more RD RWL 34 so they switched over to this CPM 154 and uh, CPM 154 and RWL 34 are basically from the way I understand it not a metallurgist not the expert on the subject they're pretty much synonymous with one another in terms of their performance in fact i think they're basically the same steel in many ways just made by different i could be wrong but that's the way i understand it so that's fine in a sense although i will say if i'm going to be objectively honest and fair across the board right um, i harp on companies like chris reeve knives for using S35 VN for way too long and then only stepping it up to S45 VN. Uh, to me, that's for what they charge, not necessarily a high enough tier steel. If that is true, then this is definitely not an okay steel to be using on a knife in this price range. Um, these are what new, like 900 bucks, something like that. I don't know what this exact spec would cost, but CPM 154, no, I get it might be easier to machine than some other super steels, and so it's saving them on tools or something. Stop trying to save on tools when you're charging nine hundred dollars for a knife. I just I don't have sympathy at that point. Um, when there are many many knives that cost a lot less and are phenomenally well built that use better steels, I, I it's fine with me if you like CPM one fifty four. I actually happen to like CPM one fifty four. I think it does pretty well. Um, CPM 154 is also very different from 154 CM. They're not the same steel. Um, so that's worth mentioning as well. CPM 154 is pretty good, but it's not $900 good. It's not even $500 good. It's not even $300 good, in my opinion. Um, so there is that. But the knife, I mean, <laughs> feels really good in hand. Um, it's very slim. It's obviously incredibly well built. I don't know personally if I'm going to find that I love this blade shape. Um, we will see. You've got the kind of recurve here, and then you've got a belly on the point or toward, up toward the point from that tanto. You've got a compound grind going on. It's a, I don't. It's an interesting shape, and I imagine functionally it'll actually work pretty well. It does get nice and thin down behind the edge. You've got more meat up at the tip, so it's a really robust tip. You've got a crown spine. There's a lot of good that's happening here, but I'm curious to see how I end up really liking it. I'm not going to be hard using this knife <laughs> at all. Um, I'll probably, frankly, hardly do any cutting with it, like, at all. Like, maybe opening a package or two, slicing some paper to see how it feels. Um, unless Sean is like... I, very encouraging to go crazy with it but I, I would feel uncomfortable using someone's Norseman hard if it's not my own um, but yeah I'll, I'll be feeling it out <laughs> so that I can review it and talk about it from a place of at least a little bit of experience these ergos are really nice I'm liking it all right so it's out of the box it's here Thank you to Sean, Geared Toward Gear. Again, his channel will be linked down below, and bo below the link to his channel, and I'll link his Instagram as well, will be the link to JD, Shadowborn Hanks. Um, shout out to him. Thank you so much for these. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>